Hello, everybody. I'm Zenith Rule. Welcome back to Diving into DuckTales, the show where we take a look at each individual episode of the new DuckTales series and discuss it and dive into it. And we are finally continuing with Season 2 after our long hiatus. And wow. Wow. This episode... Um, as soon as I heard the title, I knew this was going to be special. I did not expect what was going to happen in this episode, though. Uh, before we begin, though, I am joined once again by Cat McBerry. Hello. And Doug. How's it going, Doug? We're whalers on the moon. We carry <laughs> a harpoon. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, one thing I'll say about this episode, it definitely has the emotional impact that I thought it was going to have, um, although at the same time, it does leave you questioning many, many different things. <laughs> Freaking understatement. <laughs> Um, so Kat, why don't you give us a brief summary of the episode, uh, and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss some things, and we'll dive into just what this is all about. <laughs> sure. Well, the plot of this episode is all in the title. Whatever happened to Della Duck? Basically, we found out exactly what Della has been doing these last ten years since she disappeared. And pretty much her entire story is The Martian, starring Matt Damon. Except with Della Duck, and it's on the moon, not Mars. <laughs> <laughs> pretty and, much. Oh, yeah, and, oh man, like, I, I was hoping for explanation. I got some of it, but it's so much of it raises further questions. And it's kind of made me a little mad. <laughs> That just raises further questions. <laughs> God. <laughs> God. Um, okay, well, let, let, let's start with... like The the episode pretty much begins with Della going into the, the, the storm, and it chronicles what happened in the ten years since she crash-landed on the moon. Um, it, it appears that, first of all, she now is a cyborg because uh, she, when she crash landed on the moon, the only way to get herself out was to cut off part of her leg that was crushed under debris and make herself uh, a bionic leg, <laughs> which, <Yeah. laughs> okay. Yeah, she decided to James Franco herself, yeah. so... Uh... <laughs> But yeah, she she got her leg crushed and within the span of two months managed to cut her leg free and then rebuild a functional prosthetic leg. Like I, I wanna I wanna call bullshit, I really do. But I mean they said she's supposed to be smart. Probably not rocket scientist smart, but still. <laughs> like, she's supposed to be very smart, uh I'm wondering, how did she cauterize the wound? Yeah, although then again, that brings up the, the, the question, can you bleed naturally in space? Hmm, I mean, the Kool-Aid man would boil in space. Would your blood boil, I mean, boil in space? Well, if that's the case, then I guess your blood would cauterize itself. Hmm, that is possible. Mm. Um, the other thing that uh, happens is her helmet is cracked during the crash, and in order to survive, she uses Gyro's invention, Oxy Gum, which is black licorice flavored and apparently gives you all the nutrients and food and air that you need, but gets more flavorful as time goes on. I, and it doesn't turn evil. This is the first invention that Gyro makes that has not turned evil. True. <laughs> 
Although I should point out, Zen, it's not black licorice flavor. It's deus ex machina flavor. <laughs> yeah, because we get no explanation for, like, it, there's no buildup to it. It's just, oh, there's oxy gum. Let me try it. <laughs> well, to be fair, that was uh, in the video game. As that, well that, as... That a lot of... yeah. Sorry. yeah, that a lot of this episode was based on. So it is canon within this, the old series. So okay. it just hasn't appeared in this one. Yeah, it's not just the, uh, yeah, so the Oxy Chew is from the game, as well as, like, a lot of fans would know the moon theme, or moon level theme, because um, it's, like, it's playing throughout the entire episode, uh, you know, and it's, like, I knew that song, I didn't realize it was from the DuckTales game initially, but after they were playing it so much, it's, like, Okay, this has to be from the DuckTales game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that's part of the... Like, a lot of this episode is very cartoony. And in the, the explanations for, okay, how did she survive on the moon when there's no breathable atmosphere? Well, she had oxy gum and she turned herself into a cyborg. It, it kind of raises a, several questions... Granted, it is a cartoon, and it is a children's show, so that part, alright, I can wave away. But then it appears that she's not alone on the moon, because there's this giant parasitic monster creature that's been living in the moon, and somehow did not attack like the, the, the moon rover or any other thing whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I like... When I realized that, I'm I'm thinking my I'm thinking back to that episode of the, of uh, Doctor Who where it was revealed that like the moon was like a giant egg, so like there was like a creature inside it all along. Uh... But but this takes it a step further. But we'll get to that. <laughs> it also appears that uh, it lives inside the moon. The moon's somewhat hollow, and it it, it eats metal. So of course it does. <laughs> Of course it does. When the, when the when there's no metal on the moon, how would it survive? How we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll, okay, okay, okay. So that yeah, there are several questions that you you have to answer yourself. But it's like, all right, Della has to fight it off, and she starts creating um, a, a video log. She becomes a YouTuber um, in order to pass the time. And she's going to uh, science the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> she starts counting down the days, and after a while she starts, like, scrawling on the walls and all. Like, I'm surprised she doesn't go insane after a while, because you start counting enough times. Well, I think she's she's so driven by, you know, trying to get the ship fixed up and she's got a lot to do with her time so it's like she's making use of it so it's like if, if she were just stranded there doing nothing for long periods yes she would definitely go insane but you know she's on a mission and you know she's occupied mm, true yeah. plus she's also uh she has a monster to attack on the moon she technically is a whaler on the moon. <laughs> she carries a harpoon. Well, she also does the video diaries, and that kind of helps give her some semblance of sanity. At least it gives her, like, you know, a, something to talk to. So mm -hmm. she's not, like, completely isolated. Um, and now, first, at first she tries to call for help because she actually sees one of the search parties that... Uh, was sent out by uh, Scrooge McDuck, and one of the first transmissions was when she was attacked by the parasitic monster, creating a dust cloud, meaning they did not see her, and apparently they didn't see her ship either. Yeah, I, I call bullshit on this, because Scrooge sent out, like, at least a dozen ships. And you mean to tell me that only one ship passed by the moon once and just went... Well, doesn't look like there's anything. Guess we'll just head back home. Yeah, like, why didn't they just stop on the moon? Like, why why, why didn't they, like... And, and they said they never returned, so what happened to them? 
Unless they never, they never said cause... this. Oh they yeah, never they said got the ship didn't return. They just, uh, you know, they just never found anything. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, just remembering. Yeah, because they stopped Scrooge from, uh, you know, they they forcefully stopped Scrooge from looking. So it's very likely everything was recalled. Hmm. All I know is that they didn't land on the moon. It's like, okay, what? Why would you not land and at least check the surface before moving on? Uh. And not even that. Like, even in like the resulting years, like, not once did like anybody ever notice her. Like, NASA didn't notice her. Nobody with a telescope noticed her. Freaking Celine, the goddess of the moon, never noticed her. Like, yeah, come on. Yeah, Celine didn't notice her. Uh, some friend you are, Jesus. Some goddess <laughs> of the moon you are. Unless unless something was blocking it, maybe. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. I, I have a theory. Um, another thing we learned, so, like, the calling for help didn't work because the monster keeps eating the metal and, you know, other things. So she pulls out the Junior Woodchuck Handbook goes to plan <laughs> goes to plan C which is rebuild it <laughs> and yeah, she has the manual side. for uh you know building the ship but freaking gyro freaking mocks her <laughs> in the pages of the book <laughs> so easy Della can do it and then she uh. gets enraged and rips the thing apart and like she and is so Donald's was... sister <laughs> And then glues it back together. We see her. We see the book taped together, and I'm like, God. It's like I, I'm going to assume that it was just Gyro's own ignorance that made him write that. Because I mean, I don't think Dell is dumb. I mean, she is to a degree, but I mean, she sawed off her own leg and made a working prosthetic one. Like that takes a lot of knowledge, like to do. So obviously, she's smart to a degree. Like, <laughs> just, she's just not a rocket surgeon. I mean, if she had to attach a, a, a cyborg <laughs> leg to the rocket, maybe. But, I mean... <laughs> also, you know, there's the fact that Gyro's so full of himself and would think that, uh, you know, anybody uh, aside from him is not smart enough to do anything. But I guess apparently Della is even bigger target. Except for the inventions that inevitably turn evil. Mm. Well, I still count that gum as evil. Since like it's stronger, <laughs> the stronger, the longer she chews it. <laughs> so, so his invention still turned evil. <laughs> oh God, who makes Seriously, black, black licorice? Yeah, black like, licorice is the devil. <laughs> yeah, in his manual, so they find out that the ship is powered by gold tech. <laughs> and it's like it makes no goddamn yeah. sense <laughs> but no actually it does because gyro actually provides like sort of this uh visual aid in the book and it says things like looks impressive scrooge still has a lot of it and it hasn't turned evil dot 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 yet <laughs> 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 oh my god <laughs> and it, and it's like okay okay i know scrooge has a lot of gold but would Scrooge really be okay with funneling gold specifically into the rocket to fuel it? That's what I was thinking. Like, why, why the hell would they do that? Because, like, he, Scrooge is such a hoarder when it comes to gold. Like, why would he shovel it into a machine like it was coal? Like, come on. That, like, that's... Ugh. Like, I get it, gold is, like, kind of worthless nowadays, but... Come on. Like, you're going to do that to, like, the world's, like, richest duck. <laughs> and I know, I know, like, it kind of explains how he almost went bankrupt because he had to keep using gold as fuel. That kind of makes sense. It's just, like, one expedition, just a little bit of gold, just one nugget might have helped. But I don't know. I don't know why he would be okay with... I mean, to be to be fair, like, I assume the ship was still a prototype when Della stole it. So maybe they didn't get a chance to find, like, an alternative fuel for it yet. Because I imagine, like, Gyro went ahead and assumed that it would be okay. And then once Scrooge found out, like, he, you know, if, if he did find out, he probably would have flipped his lid and demanded that he get another resource. 
Mm, but... True. <laughs> Knowing Gyro, he probably wasn't upfront about things. <laughs> um. So yeah, she decides to rebuild the rocket. She does everything, then finds out it runs on gold, and she's like, "How do I find gold on the moon?" She searches for another few months. So there's no, no she gold. She searches on the moon. for four years. Four years. Yeah. Four years she spends searching for gold, doesn't find any, and then in her anger, she chews her gum so hard, she breaks loose one of her teeth, which is completely gold. How do you not know that? Like, wait a second, when Scrooge took me to the dentist, it was backup gold. Okay, okay, I call bullshit on this, simply because, one... How would he know specifically that she would need backup gold? I mean, yes, he is a time traveler, but for this specifically? Um, yeah, that is clairvoyance of like I can't even I can't even like say like the degree like cuz there's no way he could have known that. Like at what point would you need emergency gold to the point where you keep it in your teeth? Especially like, and not tell her. Not tell her about it. <laughs> Like, what, what, was Scrooge planning to use it just in case he ever needed it? Like, was was this his, like, number one dime, like, backup plan or something? Do Donald and Gladstone have gold in their uh, mouths? Do 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 the uh, triplets have... have Do Huey, Dewey, and Louie have gold in their mouths? And if so, has Louie found out and tried to use it at some point? <laughs> I'd imagine they set off a lot of a a lot of uh, metal detectors and stuff going going through with that gold. <laughs> yeah, seriously, and and this is something like they go flying a lot, and yeah, they have okay, they they have pilot, so they they wouldn't need it when like flying, but like what if they went into a high security area, like a, a high security vault or something like that? They would set off metal detectors, um, and. Like he, here's the thing: you can easily tell if someone has a metal at some point in their body, because because any security location has it, and I know specifically because uh, just coming back just coming back from my surgery, um, I have a ton of mesh wire inside me now, and the whole time I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm gonna need a card because I am covered in metal from. Like my entire chest is covered in metal, and yet they don't they don't tell them, and somehow it goes unnoticed for all these years. Yeah, seriously. Like I work at the courthouse, and I remember my coworker saying that she used to work with this one guy who had a metal plate in his head. And when you go to the courthouse, you got to go through the metal detector every single time. So the guy had to bring like a special badge with him or whatever, and then he had to get stopped and like have like that wand waved over his head just to confirm he had metal in his head. Like, yeah, that is inconvenient. <laughs> my previous chest surgery, I had to let people know because I had a bar in my chest and my dad has a stent in his heart. So, like, he has to have a special card. It, it's maybe in this universe, things are different. But then again, in DuckTales universe, things are much more dangerous. So I imagine they have higher security precautions that have, like, more than just metal detectors that would have noticed this by now. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just chalk it up to plot convenience and leave it at that. <laughs> okay, okay. So, assuming this is cartoon logic, all of this, even though it raises so many questions, you know what? You gotta have a story. There's an, there's an alien on the moon. Their, their spaceship runs on gold. There's gold fillings in her tooth. Okay. Let's get to the other bullshit part. So, <laughs> um... She gets attacked once again by the uh, moon parasite, which tries to destroy her spaceship again. Her spaceship gets taken underground, and she's trying to follow it underneath when she finds moon aliens. On the warriors moon. of the planet Moon. <laughs> now, this is something that Kat pointed out as soon as we finished the episode. She's been searching for how long and never encountered them? Yeah, she's been on the moon for 10 years. She searched the entire 
like sphere, like over a four year span looking for gold, presumably digging wherever she thought she could find it. And not once did she ever stumble upon any of the alien life forms that live on it or live within it. None of them have ever come to the surface. She never came across that weird gold plated rock. And like at this point, my suspension of disbelief is like, no, uh, -uh no, no way. <laughs> come on. That's like that's like finding out, you know, the the series Lost didn't actually take place on an island, that it was actually attached to a landmass on the other side the whole time, and nobody just ever walked that side. <laughs> hmm. And so they band together. She use, Using her Louis logic, she's able to figure out exactly how this adventure is going to go. So she's just like, we're going to end up banding together and be best friends, so let's just take this thing down. <laughs> um, she fights off the moon creature, and she, she realizes, after a lot of fighting, that the creature is a mother and is trying to feed its child. And because she is also a mother and misses her, her children, she offers the gold tooth to them, and they're pacified. Now, this part I thought was pretty sweet because it ties into uh, a portion of the episode I'll get to in a minute. Um, but it's just it it really drives home the emotion of the episode, and it makes sense because she's just trying to feed herself and her baby on the moon where there's no metal. But okay. Um, <laughs> Well, they eat gold, apparently, because they have, like, sensors that, like, light up whenever gold is nearby. Mm-hmm. So they, they, they eat gold on the moon, and apparently there is gold on the moon, because when they beat the Moonanites, like I did so many years ago, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that they have a city on the moon that's hidden from sight, that is full of gold, and it has so much gold that they sometimes just throw it in the trash, which is also gold-plated. Like, that is such bullshit. <laughs> like, come on. Like, I could maybe buy it, but, like, the fact, again, the fact that she was there for ten years, she didn't notice them, and they didn't notice her. Like, really? <laughs> really? Like, not, not only that, but science. Okay, let, let's just say scientifically that the, the, oxy, the oxy gum works in this universe. The moon still has a mass. The reason why the gravity is so much lower on the moon is because all the, the mass is smaller and compacted, and I'm pretty sure the presence of all that gold would have made the gravity change from what it is. I guess. I mean, that would make sense and everything, but still. like, <laughs> And I'm just trying to wrap my head around this, because I can understand the moon, the moon people not wanting to be found, because they obviously, like, based on their dialogue with Della, they obviously don't have a good view of, like, of what they call Earthers. So I imagine, you know, they do have tech to, like, keep themselves hidden and everything, but you think with the, at some point they would have developed some sort of technology that will let them know whenever people got close to their planet or landed on their planet or have been living on their planet? You would but think a crash no. landing would raise some, you know, notice. Yeah, because... I mean, come on, the, the moon is like a fraction of the size of the Earth. And like, m most of humanity has like, scoured and mapped out like, almost every square inch of the planet. You mean to tell me that this like, supposed advanced civilization that runs everything on gold didn't like, do the same thing? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> part of me wonders if they did it on purpose and they only showed up when it benefited them because there's some hits at the end of the episode that they might not be the most upstanding of most trustworthy of people yeah so part of me wonders if they planned at that specific time to come out 
um, when, you know, they needed an ally or th- there's well, some the things. Only, well, the only reason they showed up is because they were following the moon might, which again raises questions because that thing had been appearing several times over the years to Della. And then all of a sudden these aliens show up and they're like, these creatures have evaded our best warriors. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? This thing pops up like freaking seagulls on bread. Come on. <laughs> Especially because it feeds on gold, and their guns are made of gold, so why... I, I... Basically, anytime there's, like, loose metal showing up, like, when uh, Della first crash lands and sets up base, or when she's, uh, you know, putting making the, uh, the fragments of the ship into a uh, SOS message, it's like, that seems to be the only time when the thing will show up. I guess that they can hibernate for a while after eating some metal. It's it, there. There's not enough explanation here, to be honest. Um, and so, yeah, she she gets led into the the moon city. We we only see two moonanites, which you know that I mean that's okay because as we know from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, there's only two. <laughs> They made um, that entire that huge ass giant city, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it ends kind of on a questionable note. Like she, she, she's happy that she finally found a, a way to get off the planet. She found gold, and she can probably rebuild the rocket now. She, now that she knows how. Um, but the Moonanites have a sinister air about them. It's like she could prove useful, or she could be an enemy. Like they, they're. They're setting something up there. Um, so technically, this is the A plot because the B plot is more about her um, dealing with the loss of, you know, her children. And we'll talk about that in a second. But the A plot, I got to say, <laughs> the biggest problem is that it is so just there there are so nonsense explanations in in granted this is our car this is a cartoon meant for younger children i understand that but there's only so much suspension of disbelief that i have and i feel like well it still really really works as a good episode um because of the emotional elements there are just some things that i'm just like I kind of wanted more. Unless it's setting up for something later, I kind of wanted a better explanation for a couple different things. And oxy gum, really? I mean, I can buy the oxy gum thing because Gyro would come up with something that stupid that somehow manages to work. <laughs> like, and like I said, it's canon within the games. So again, it's not out of left field. Um, but okay. but everything else, yeah, is like kind of a stretch for me. Like, I, we watched this one reviewer, and he came up with a theory as to you know, like before the episode aired as to what ha- happened to Della, and you know, part of that theory was based on the comic that she was in, where you know she takes off and then disappears and then reappears years later. He believed that you know, she had gone through some sort of, like, time vortex caused by the, uh, caused by the, uh, storm. And then, like, she actually didn't show up on the moon till, like, maybe, like, several years later. You know, as early as maybe, like, a year before the events of, like, DuckTales went down. So, you know, I, thinking that, I'm, thinking that, I'm thinking, yeah, like, that actually would make sense, because that would explain why none of the ships ever found her on the moon, why Celine never knew she was on the moon, why nobody else had ever saw that she was on the moon, but they don't even touch that, like, that's not even a possibility, and the thing is, like, based on the narrative, they could have easily squeezed all that into, like, the span of, like, one or two years, Because, like, there are times where, like, they jump, like, a good couple of years. Like, at one point, it's, like, six years later. Another point, it's four years later. It's, like, you know, there's not much change. You could have just easily condensed all that. (laughs) Like, the time thing could have worked. I just don't understand why they didn't do it. Yeah, um, that part, it, it, it just raises further questions. Doug? Yeah, no, I, I do feel like they kind of got bogged down in trying to reference, you know, 
the uh, the video game, uh, especially because you know they play the moon theme level, uh, you know, so many times that I feel like they kind of forgot that you know there were certain explanations that they needed to cover or that some explanations that they provided wound up contradicting the others. So yeah, I, I'm kind of with you on that. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the like the main thing that works about this episode, though, and why I think I still think this is a fantastic episode. The emotion is freaking amazing. If there's one thing that I will give this episode is that there are definitely times that nearly made me tear up because everything that Della does is for her children. And uh, whenever she stares at the picture of Donald and her children, um, like she, she, like it almost feels like she's getting ready to tear up, and then she gets the energy to continue going out and uh, rebuild the rocket or or do whatever. And her video log, like she, at, at one year later, she makes a birthday cake for the boys, and uh, when she finally finishes up the spaceship, like she just like. All right, uh, finally did it. We're gonna get back home. Best mom ever, and she cracks her knuckles. Like she, she does everything for her children. And as, as as bad as she was made out to be in the like initial episode where we learned what happened to her, you gotta admire like how much she cares for her children. Yeah, I I can see that like. Definitely the, the episode did its job with making her likable and sympathetic. Because before that, the only, like, the only exposure we really got to Della was when she was a kid in the Christmas episode. So it's good to know that, like, you know, she, the boys have always been number one on her mind. And, you know, her main goal has always been to get back to them. Like, I still don't think it fully you know, redeems her for the fact that she basically went on a joyride and left her children behind. And that's why she's in this situation. Like, I still don't really forgive, forgive her for that. And it kind of like was annoying a bit to me that at no point in the 10 years, does she like have this breakdown and, and think to herself, Oh my God, I did this. I abandoned my children just for this lame adventure. What have I done? Like she never has that moment which, you know, I guess she can't really afford to because, you know, she has to put all of her efforts and all her mental thinking into, like, getting back to them. But I don't know. I would have liked at least a brief moment like that because, like, a lot, of the, a lot of the bad shit that happens is kind of her fault, too. Because, you know, she gets, all, she gets all pissed off and stuff. She acts real rash and impulsive. She doesn't think things through, like, kind of like Donald. So, you know... It's not like it's not like she's a complete victim of circumstance. Like again, this all happened because she ultimately made a selfish decision. So like again, I want to like Della and I do like Della. I thought this episode was brilliant in how they portrayed her and you can definitely see how the boys each take after her in a unique way. So but like I said, there's a, but that thing is always going to be in the back of my mind that, yeah, well, she's still an awful mother for, you know, ditching her kids just to fly around in a, in a ship. So that's always good. That's, you know, until something comes, until an episode comes along later that changes my mind on that. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. <laughs> for me, I think the heart of this episode and the pacing, just how it was presented, really made it for me. Yeah, there are some questionable things, but I really like, you know, the, the vlog setup, like how it's a documentary style and, and it showcases things as time passes. The Moon Knight stuff is a little bit weird, as is the gold and whatnot. But overall, I really do enjoy this episode. Um, I think it's heartfelt and emotional. And there are definitely some times where I was just getting ready to tear up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very good episode. Personally, for me, I think this is... Uh, a great episode, regardless of the flaws. What do you think, Doug? So, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of willing to overlook, you know, the bad mother element of uh, Della and that, you know, 
her acting ir- irrationally, irresponsibly, and, you know, going off, because I think she's been punished enough at this point. She's, uh, you know, being stranded on the mood for ten years, I-, I-, I think I can forgive her for this. I mean, obviously, if she does get back, she and Donald are going to have words, but we'll get to that when we get to that, if we get to that. Uh, yeah, you definitely see, like, elements of Donald and, you know, all three of the boys in her at, you know, one time or another, uh, you know, she can be her own worst enemy and she, you know, a lot of the rescue attempts or stuff are thwarted by her because it's like, rather than stay put and, you know, if, if she had just stayed where she was when the, um, Might was attacking the, uh, the message you know, she wouldn't have kicked up dust and, uh, you know, made uh, the the rescue party that was coming by, you know, miss them completely. Um, but yeah, I mean, there there's still also, you know, you see that she really does care, that she really desperately wants to be reunited with them, that, you know, apparently she sang to them. Uh, when they were still eggs, and again, you know, going into the whole uh, moon level theme, she actually made that into a lullaby for them, which, you know, she sings to calm down the uh, the baby moon mite um, before, you know, she could finally get it to eat the gold. So it's like, you know, there there is quite a lot of heart in her. You do root for her, you know, even if... The, a lot of it was her own fault. It's like, you, you want to see her be redeemed. You really do. Not to mention, she's been punished by by the black licorice enough, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Which, like, Gyro better hope she never gets off the moon. <laughs> yeah, he in for an ass whooping. Kill him. <laughs> you made me have black licorice that got more flavorful for ten years. Years and didn't make any other kind of gub. And you insulted me in book form. (laughs) God, her taste buds are going to be, like, shot to shit. She's going to have, like, black licorice aftertaste in every single thing she eats now. (laughs) Eggs. Oh, God, it still tastes like black licorice. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now the big question is what's going to happen as a result of this. Like, my theory personally is that the is that the the aliens are gonna like let her work on her ship for now and that as they like think of a way to use her to their advantage like maybe they're gonna invade earth i don't know like they obviously don't like earth but i guess we'll see but i think at some point she's gonna realize what they're doing and they might capture her and that's when she like finds a way to act send like a legit signal to earth and like they discover that she's actually alive and so the and so the duck family decides to go up to the moon and rescue her i mean it would kind of fit in with the games so mm, i have that's a, just a theory <laughs> I, I i have a theory that the moonanites aren't actually moonanites they're alien criminals that were stranded on the moon um and i you know part of me thinks that they were they were uh stranded there by the moon parasite so that would explain a lot of things, but then again, I'm probably wrong. I would say probably the most likely scenario is that the uh, you know the planet moon people have not been there that long. That they they were maybe there in the last couple years that they set up shop, but yeah, it's it's very likely they're not actually you know you know native to the moon. Which well, would me- make a lot of sense. Well, I remember in the original show, they, they established that there was, like, life on Mars. And the characters actually were, like, taken there at one point. And basically, it was just a race of, like, cre- of creatures that, you know, were bent on, like, universal domination. And they were just, like, pretty much populating planet to planet. So it's possible maybe the, the aliens are originally from Mars or some other nearby planet. And that's, like, just their base that they're setting up. Or they're just slowly, like you know, colonizing whatever, like, planet they happen to uh, land on. They Close. call it the planet moon, damn it. It's not the a planet. planet. Moon. 
In fact, and, there and are planets that have multiple moons. <laughs> what what if what, what if they're descended from Marvin the Martian and they're still trying to conquer the moon in the name of Mars? <laughs> Oh, this makes I mean, me very angry. Very <laughs> angry indeed. <laughs> I mean, I would make the Pluto comparison, but considering Pluto's status as a planet is in debate right now, because I don't think the moon is that much smaller than it, but I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that being said, the biggest issue with this episode is that it raises... Far more questions than it answers. <laughs> and it's yep. like, part of me really loved this episode. Don't get me wrong, it has emotion, it has heart. But I want to know more. And <laughs> I, I have questions. So many questions. <laughs> I have so many questions. It like, just wh- raises too many questions. One, why didn't you tell me about your moon base? Two, take me to your moon base. <laughs> <laughs> ah, damn it, Ronaldo. <laughs> um, At least it's not shaped like a barn. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, guys, um, I think that's pretty much all we can say for now. Um, unfortunately, this is one of those episodes that, yeah, there, there's some really great stuff here. But we kind of need to know more before we can 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 see the bigger picture here. Um, with that being said, uh, do either of you have anything more to add before we sign off? I don't think so. As of now, I don't know when the next episode is. Like, chances are it'll probably resume sometime this summer, given the pattern of uh, the episode releases. But for now, you know, we just have this to tide us over. So I think, I think this will give us enough to ponder until uh, more episodes come back. So yay, get to theorizing. <laughs> yeah. I'd say last year, the, uh, the episodes came back starting around May. So I imagine they're probably going to do sort of a similar thing this time. So yeah, we'll have, you know, a few more months before we get like full on season DuckTales. Uh, I mm-hmm. do, suspect though this is going to be like a the season arc and that you know we will kind of get into this more in the season finale uh, that's my theory anyway um but yeah i mean definitely this was a nice episode that you know we we have had no real character development outside of what we're told and you know the very few times we saw Della in like last Christmas or, you know, other flashback episodes or what anybody's told us. So yeah, it was nice to actually have an episode that just focuses solely on Della. (laughs) Yes. It was a great, uh, it was a great episode that just focused on her character. I liked it. Um, I'm not sure when the episodes are going to continue. Um, viewers are probably going to let us know. Uh, but with that said, I am Zenith Rule. I'm Cat MacBerry. I'm Penny Viva. I'm Doug MacBerry. And uh, we will see you next time the episodes continue to air when they do. Um, with that being said, have a good one, guys. And just remember, if you're stranded on the moon, bring gum with you. Just not black licorice. Dear God. In the name of the moon, Black Licorice will punish you. Hey, this is Megami33. Thank you for watching Zenith Will Review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome videos. If you like what you see, check out the Patreon page at patreon.com slash zenithwillreview.